limit of trigonometric functions. Evaluate limit of cos x minus 1 divided by x when x approaches 0. How will you solve this question? Now the best way to solve it is to multiply and divide by the conjugate of cos x minus 1. Let's do that. We have limit x approaches 0 of cos x minus 1 over x. So let's multiply and divide by cos x plus 1. Right? So when we do that, the numerator becomes cos square x minus 1. Difference of squares. So we get this equals to limit x approaches 0 cos square x minus 1 over x times cos x plus 1. Now what is cos square x minus 1? Cos square x minus 1 can be written as yes minus sine square x. So we can write this as minus sine square x over x times cos x plus 1. Now it's better to write it in two parts like this. So we can write one part as limit of sine x over x which we know is 1 right. So we can write this as sine x over x and the other part as limit of x approaches 0 with minus sine x over the next factor which is cos x plus 1. Correct? Now what is the limit of sine x over x? It is 1. Right? So we can write this as 1 and how about the limit of minus sine x over cos x. Well, the limit of sine x as x approaches 0 is 0. So let me, let me first write it in that form. So we can write this as limit of, we can write minus outside, right? Sine x as x approaches 0 over limit of cos x as x approaches 0 plus 1 will remain 1, right? It's a constant. So from here, we know limit of sine x when x approaches 0 is 0, right? So we actually get 1 times 0 over and limit of cos x when x approaches 0 is 1. So we get 1 plus 1. But any times, anything times 0 is always 0. So we get our answer as 0, correct? So that is the answer for this particular question. So we can write limit of cos x minus 1 over x when x approaches 0 is equal to 0. Now let's see what we did and how we solved it. So in the first step, we applied the technique of multiplying and dividing both with conjugates so that we get difference of squares, right? So here we used a plus b times a minus b is equals to a square minus b square. So that is how we get cos square x minus 1. Now you know cos square x minus 1 is minus sine square x. How? We know sine square x plus cos square x equals to 1. Now if I write cos square x minus 1, I will get minus sine square x. So we got the next step. And then we applied the properties of limits. So we can do it in parts. So we wrote sine square x as sine x times minus sine x, correct? And we used x with the first one and the other factor with the next one. So we got the next statement. This is our fundamental limit. Sine x over x when x approaches 0. We know it is 1. So we wrote 1 here, correct? That's 1. Now for the other part, limit of sine x when x approaches 0 is 0, that comes in the numerator and for cos x when x approaches 0 is 1, 
we get 1 plus 1. So you can divide 0 by 2, you get 0. 0 times anything is 0. That leads us to the answer. I hope the steps are very clear to you. Now it is important for me to explain you these steps because you are going to apply similar steps to do to solve many of the trigonometric functions. So go through it once again and then do the rest of the questions in the playlist. Thank you and all the best.